London is a very bustling and thriving city, to the extent that you would never guess it is in constant danger of getting flooded because of the Thames River. In fact, it could theoretically suffer flooding losses that would cripple it entirely, and claim hundreds of human lives and billions of dollars on top of that. But this possibility will never actually take place. Thanks to the Thames Barrier, it is an engineering marvel that keeps the city and all its residents safe all year round. This barrier is designed never to fail, and the engineering team monitoring it 24 hours daily ensures that. In today's video, we'll take you on a tour of this gigantic project and look at its past, present, and future to see how it works and why it's guaranteed to keep the Thames River at bay. Welcome back to PST Mega Projects. The Thames Barrier stands as a testament to human ingenuity and engineering excellence. Located in the heart of London, this magnificent structure serves as a crucial defense against the powerful tides of the River Thames. Designed to protect the city from potential catastrophic flooding, the barrier is a symbol of resilience and foresight. The barrier, completed in 1982, was born out of the devastating North Sea floods of 1953, which claimed the lives of hundreds in the UK. The North Sea floods of 1953 were a series of devastating floods that affected several countries, including the United Kingdom. While these floods did not directly impact London itself, the event played a significant role in shaping the design and construction of the Thames Barrier. The North Sea floods occurred during the night of January 31 to February 1, 1953, primarily affecting coastal areas of the Netherlands, Belgium, and the eastern coast of England. A combination of high spring tides, a severe storm surge, and low atmospheric pressure created a perfect storm that resulted in widespread flooding. The floods affected coastal regions across Lincolnshire, Norfolk, Suffolk, and Essex in the UK. More than 300 people lost their lives, and tens of thousands were forced to evacuate their homes. The floodwaters caused extensive damage to infrastructure, homes, and farmland. The severity of the floods prompted a reassessment of flood protection measures and led to the development of the Thames Barrier. The floods served as a wake-up call to the vulnerability of low-lying areas, including London, to tidal surges from the North Sea. The decision to construct the Thames Barrier was influenced by the catastrophic nature of the 1953 floods and the need for a robust defense system to protect the capital from similar events in the future. The barrier is situated downstream from central London, spanning the 520-meter width of the Thames at Woolwich Reach. Its primary purpose is to prevent tidal surges from the North Sea and storm surges from flooding the capital. If the Thames barrier were to fail, the repercussions for London would be severe. The city, built around the historic River Thames, is highly vulnerable to flooding due to its low-lying location. The barrier's failure would expose vast areas of the capital to devastating flooding, resulting in substantial economic and human losses. The financial district, housing numerous businesses and institutions, would be particularly at risk. The infrastructure damage would be immense, with roads, bridges, and underground tunnels inundated by the surging water. Homes, landmarks, and cultural sites along the riverbanks would also suffer extensive damage. The human toll would be significant, with potential loss of life and displacement of residents. It is estimated that the total losses that the city would incur if something were to go wrong seriously could be anywhere from 20 to 100 billion dollars. It does not help that the city's state is not what it was back in 1953. A lot more would be at stake. For example, many more people now live in London, and given the wide network of infrastructure built over the years to support the expanding city, the damage would be beyond belief. Just think of public transportation systems like the metro lines that did not exist back then, or the damage to the sewage system. Evacuating hundreds of thousands of people from their homes and suspending all public transportation services would be crippling to the city and the UK's economy as a whole. On top of that, the environmental impact of a barrier failure cannot be understated. The Thames is home to an array of wildlife, and the flooding could disrupt delicate ecosystems, leading to the loss of habitats and endangering species. Contamination from the floodwaters could have long-term consequences for water quality, affecting both human and aquatic life. The barrier comprises 10 steel gates, each 20 meters wide and 30 meters high, resting on concrete piers. Each of these gates weighs a whopping 3,000 tons of steel. These gates are normally held open, allowing river traffic to pass freely. However, when river levels rise during high tides, the barrier is closed to form a solid barrier, impeding the progress of incoming tidal waters. When the gates are closed, they create a barrier that can resist water levels as high as 9 meters above the average tide, protecting London from potential disaster. The steel gates that block the water are protected with what is called a sacrificial anode. 
Basically, the water of the river is corrosive to metal and could with time result in a catastrophic erosion of the gates. The sacrificial anode acts as an easily replaceable barrier that the water eats away instead of damaging the main gates. As a consequence, the gates of the Thames barrier will be able to last up to 100 years or more. You might think that corrosive water is not the only danger engineers have to account for. What would happen if, for example, a ship were to crash into one of the gates? Would an accidental collision of this sort cause a city-wide disaster of immense scale? Not really. The sheer size and sturdiness of the gates would be able to withstand any collision with minimal damage. In fact, a collision would only be unlucky for the ship. In any case, we don't need to rely on speculation to think about this hypothetical situation, because there have actually been cases of ships crashing into the barrier. In 1997, a ship named Sand Kite crashed into the piers, and the only damage to the barrier was a bit of scratched paint and a broken ladder. The ship, on the other hand, unfortunately sank. However, things were not so simple, at least in this particular case. When the ship sank, it unluckily rested right at the entrance of one of the gates, which would have prevented the gate from closing. In case a flood was about to occur, the team had a contingency plan. Close all the other gates at the same time, which would cause an unstoppable amount of water to power through the open gate and push the ship out of the way. It is worth noting that one blocked gate would not cause the barrier to fail. That would be a horrible design. There is a margin of error that accounts for such situations. Admittedly, a blocked gate would cause the margin to disappear, but London would remain safe nonetheless, and the problem would most likely be solved before another failure occurred. In addition to the gates, the barrier also includes two smaller, non-navigable control gates that help regulate water flow during normal conditions. This ensures that the river's ecosystem remains balanced and minimizes the impact on the surrounding environment. The Thames Barrier's continued effectiveness relies on regular maintenance and upgrades. The Environment Agency, responsible for its operation, conducts frequent inspections to ensure the barrier's structural integrity. Routine maintenance includes cleaning the gates, inspecting the hydraulic systems, and testing the electrical equipment. Plans are underway to address the challenges posed by climate change and rising sea levels to enhance the barrier's capabilities. The Thames Estuary 2100 plan outlines measures to safeguard London and surrounding areas until the end of the century. These include the potential construction of additional barriers and flood defenses. The barrier's computerized control center constantly monitors weather conditions, river levels, and tidal patterns. This enables timely closure of the gates when necessary, ensuring a rapid response to potential threats. Finally, each gate is periodically tested to ensure it can properly do its job. There are annual and monthly tests in which some of the gates are exposed to the maximum amount of water they are supposed to hold. The original construction cost of this project was estimated at around half a billion dollars back when it was finished in 1982. Adjusting this number for inflation, the project would cost over $1.5 billion today. However, this number is merely the construction cost and does not include the tremendous costs of constant maintenance required. The team of workers and engineers monitoring the site 24 hours a day must get paid well, and the replacement or repair materials aren't going to pay for themselves. Overall, the barrier is currently estimated to have cost billions of dollars in maintenance. This figure is only expected to keep on growing in the foreseeable future. Arguably, however, this is money well spent. The Thames Barrier stands as an iconic engineering marvel, protecting London from the ever-present risk of flooding. Its design, featuring massive gates and cutting-edge control systems, showcases human endeavors to overcome nature's challenges. The failure of the barrier would have catastrophic consequences for the city, highlighting the critical role it plays in safeguarding London's infrastructure and inhabitants. Through meticulous maintenance and future upgrades, the Thames Barrier remains a steadfast guardian, providing invaluable protection for generations to come. This concludes today's video. What do you think about this project? Which part of it do you find the most exciting? And do you know of any other projects of this scope that are as important as this one? Please let us know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content about interesting projects like this. We'll see you in the next video.